Hello everyone and welcome back to 2Pluto with a big rocket in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. And in this video we're going to try to land on Pluto, but first I want to make some corrections. Uh, in particular I would like to flatten our orbit just a little bit, this is a little bit extreme, and also bring our orbit down. So I'm proceeding with this ion engine burn, but uh, we won't be able to do this just on this go, we'll have to come around again a few times. Uh, so I'm probably going to cut all that out. And to make it even more fun, we are currently on our reaction wheels in order to turn because our methane and oxygen is so low, so we'll reserve that for the trip back home. On the bright side, there is a trip back home. I've got a plot here, Pluto to Earth. Um, for, it's a, in 47 days, and the ejection, uh, if you can see on there, ejection delta V, 8,005 meters per second. So... Well, I mean, we don't quite have that right now, but after our landers deplete their fuel, right, because they're going to consume their fuel, will be lighter. And so it's my hope that we'll have that much by then. And then the trip time is 13 years and 55 days. You can see travel 15 years, uh, sorry, 13 years and 55 days. And right now we have 14 years and 89 days worth of food and 14 years, 147 days worth of oxygen. The water is a problem, as we discovered last time. I have changed the output ratio, and so hopefully it'll be closer to what it's supposed to be. I've got to 80% of the wastewater gets turned into water. That's what we will have on the trip back, hopefully, if it all works correctly. It was supposed to be at 75% before. Uh, but I think it was actually set to something less than that because in a previous version of Kerbal Space Program where I used this part in 1.6.1, when I set it to 0.75, it would give me more than that. And I didn't understand why, so I adjusted it down so that it would just give me the 0.75, which is what the ISS actually does. It restores 75% of uh, the water and from the wastewater, and the rest is waste, of course. But yeah, I think I needed to readjust that to the correct ratio here, otherwise uh, we were having a little bit of a problem. So we'll try and bring them back, but first we want to land on both Pluto and Sharon, or Karen, I don't know. I like Sharon better. But let me take care of these burns to adjust our orbit a little bit to make it a little bit nicer, and I'll see you on the flip side. Okay, I'm still doing ion engine burns to bring our orbit down and hopefully make it a less inclined orbit. Uh, but I was fidgeting around with maneuvers and I got this interesting thing. This sort of Principio Fa Principia kind of thing. Uh, so here we've got uh, a little maneuver here of 81 meters per second. But I don't think we can do that because ion engines take a long time and we won't be able to do that 81 in time. Uh, which also causes problems for our eventual escape, but we'll talk about that later. Um, also, we need to reserve like 8,005 for this maneuver. But anyway, uh, here we've got a Karen, Sharon flyby uh, here in four days like this. And then that flings us out to a high orbit. And there's another problem because the high orbit... Uh, leads us to another encounter in 41 days, but that'd be too long. And that encounter with Karen, Sharon, uh, yields us this pass with another periapsis that flings us out to here, which, which is like that. And we come back in and encounter Karen, Sharon again, uh, like this. <laughs> so triple encounter into this a completely different orbit around Pluto. You can see we're starting in this uh, light blue orbit here and ending up in this purple orbit there. That's a heck of a thing, isn't it? I just wanted to show you that. That That's fun. But we're not going to be doing that, no. Um, I'll have to check whether bringing our orbit down helps or hurts this eventual Earth transfer. I mean, because we're bringing our orbit down, but I think we would normally exit in the direction that we are. We already have our apoapsis, so it might actually be hurting us. Yeah. To be honest, I think I should stop. Um, this might actually be hurting our eventual escape here. Okay, uh, so let me 
see if that's done some damage. Okay, no insertion burn in this case. And actually we have to adjust this. We want it sooner rather than later, but we want to limit the time of flight to, let's say, 4,900 days. That's 13 years and 155 days. Oh, we're not too bad off. In fact, I think we're better. I hope... Well, that's in 261 days. Well, that changes things. That's over here. But that's complicated. If it's in 261 days and the travel time's 13 years and 155 days, that's too much. Okay, that's in 20 days. That gives me a little bit more time. I think I can deal with that. That'll be a better combination. Okay, well, there's that. Now let's check if MechJeb agrees with that, because we can plot that right now, I think. We'll see. But only if MechJeb likes the short transfer time. Okay, let's create that node. So that would be in two days only. But there's there's a Earth encounter there. Wow, that gets within the orbit of Venus. It might get within the orbit of Mercury, so that's pretty extreme. We're gonna be coming in with a lot of velocity. Okay, let's say it's like that. And can I figure out how much delta V we would need to say capture? How much excess velocity we've got. Uh, I can't even fathom how fast we're coming in, given that a retrograde burn of 11,000 isn't enough to capture. Okay, 28,000 if we take this transfer. 20, I don't know if that's what Kerbal, uh, Kerbal Transfer Window or Transfer Window Planner was actually thinking of. Let's see. Okay, well, insertion 14,000. Which is better than 28,000, though. Okay, but let's focus on the landings first. I think we'll just stick to this orbit around Pluto for now. And instead, our landers will do their thing. Let's see. And then we'll have to reassess. Maybe we'll just leave the landers in orbit around Pluto instead of bringing them back. That's probably for the best. We could always bring fuel for them if we thought we wanted to reuse them. Okay, I think we should probably send off the landers on this side so that they can retro burn down uh, from this periapsis. Bring that whole thing down and land on the opposite side. It all looks pretty dark, of course. Uh, landing on the daylight side is deceptive, I guess. Uh, after all, uh, that that there's Mer well, it says Mercury, but the sun's right there. It's no more than a little star. Earth, and then uh, Venus there, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. <laughs> it's all a long ways away. Yep. Okay, so we we probably just want to send. Tamri, the pilot, and a geologist. Okay, so let's check. Well, let's open up the fuels, oxidizer, water, food. We've got power. They don't have any power generation on here, so it's all battery. That may be a flaw. We'll see. Okay, I think that's all of them. And checking that the two of them, oh, it doesn't say transfer crew. Yep, they're in there. Okay. Decouple node. Okay, they are free. Okay, our attitude adjustment's a little bit too weak. That was for the huge ship, not for this. Well, no ignition limit, so we might as well go for it. So we are bringing our orbit down first, pretty quickly as you can see. We're not going that fast after all. 
Okay, because the low g-forces and all can fool me and we actually have a pretty long burn time, I need to make sure I have uh, the suicide burn count. One catch to this is we don't have that much power, so we probably didn't want our main mission to be in such a high orbit because it's going to be tough to get back to it quickly. In a lower orbit, it'd come around much more regularly, and we can meet up with it far more easily. Right now, we've only got 12 hours. 12 hours of electric charge. This was probably a bad idea. At least some solar panels would have been nice. Why didn't I put solar panels? <laughs> well, of course I didn't put solar panels because they don't do anything around Pluto. Uh, why didn't I put a nuclear reactor? Okay, I can probably see why I didn't do that. And an RTG, you'd need to put a lot of RTGs in order to get one kilowatt. So it is a bit of a conundrum. But maybe with all the Delta V I've packed, we can sort of force a quick rendezvous. I hope. Okay, we have an intersect point. I'll land there. I don't know where the heart is. None of it looks particularly appetizing. It looks so much better in those photos. Um, I was brought out of time warp for some reason. I don't know what. Hmm. Oh, because we've entered the physical warp limit at 108 kilometers? Jeez. That's pretty early. The suicide burn countdown isn't exactly very concerned. Uh, yeah, it's wobbling a bit. Okay, I'm going to do an initial attempt here because I don't quite trust that suicide burn countdown. And maybe I'm already too late. We'll see. Ladder might have been nice. <laughs> Uh, but we can always sort of retract the landing gear and sit down and maybe the Kerbal can hop up there. We've got about moonlight gravity. I forget whether the nerfed EVA packs in Realism Overhaul could handle the moon or not. Well, it's been quite a long retro burn. Landing burn. But it's looking good so far. We're getting close now though. Okay, let's finish off the horizontal velocity. Eh, I can't see a whole lot. <laughs> Just really dark down there. Okay, let's shut down there. And I'll go SAS. And hope that suicide burn countdown isn't wrong. Now shade it a little bit for ignition. To oh, I think it started doing weird things. At least we have infinite ignitions. Oh, sideways. Oh. Well, it's sort of a cliff. Well, not cliff, but slope. It's rather a slope. And we're sliding. We're sliding. Oh. We're sort of getting more upright, though. So maybe we're coming close to a bottom. Here, uh, stop that. We're slowing down, so... Okay, we've stopped. Alright. Um, geologist, EVA please. Well, let's hope you can get back up there. 
Okay, standard moonwalk kind of thing. And you can stop now. I didn't, hold on, stop, stop. Wait, I'm not pressing W. Orbart's doing this on Orbart's own. Stop it. Uh, I can't control Orbart anymore. Guys, Orbart's gone rogue. Whoa, okay, okay, he stopped. That was weird. Okay, plant flag. I can't see the flag. <laughs> okay, Orbart on Pluto. First. Okay. I don't know if Orbart can get back. Orbart's doing weird things, as you can see. Yeah. Control of Orbart is not guaranteed on Pluto. I, I'm not doing anything. I can't see the flag, I can't control Orobart. This may be a problem. And I can't activate the EVA pack right now. Maybe I should just use that. I don't know if it'll work, but he's going faster and faster and I cannot control him. Can't really see a whole lot right now. Hold on. Let me say, uh, what if I, well, I can switch vessel to this. Does that, okay, that stops him. Okay, just jetpack on. Okay, well, jetpack works, and jetpack is simple. Oh, for heaven's sake, Sorbart. Geologist. All right, board. I didn't even take the surface sample, but you know, let's just get on with it. All right, so now we have to figure out how to get back to our vessel there without it taking too long around there-ish <laughs> 60 degrees or so let's try that but let's have the rendezvous planner up so I have a reference RCS on and go I swear that's less Delta V than I thought we had, but okay. There's some daylight over the horizon. Maybe we land we just landed in a very dark area. I mean I can't really tell though. Can't say we really got to enjoy our Pluto landing very much because it's so dark. We need to like position some orbital spotlights on around Pluto. That could help. I don't know if it's still the case that some lights like to illuminate large sections of the surface they're orbiting. That could be helpful now. Okay, well we don't have an orbit yet but let's assess the situation here. I think we're going to have to use the other lander to rescue this one. And we're going to have to not do Karen, Karen slash Saren, Sharon, whatever. Uh, yeah. Karen versus Sharon. <laughs> anyway, uh, hmm, yep. I did not pack enough Delta V in these things. Two days. They don't have two days worth of electric charge. Uh, we can just not pay attention to them. There's that option. Okay, yeah. Let's make orbit and then arrange for a rescue. Okay, well that's an orbit. Let's keep it there for now. Okay, well technically about 10 hours worth of power left. And definitely not enough Delta V to get back to our mission there. And the mission's in way too high in orbit because it's gonna come back here in two days. So yeah, we'll just do shenan shenanigans. Let's switch to that, have it come around, and deploy the other lander to, to rendezvous. So yes, sorry about this, but we 
apparently need to carry more batteries. I guess that's the best way to go about it. Um, the other thing would be to have brought this mission down into an even lower orbit than we have right now. So, but again, that would cause more problems for leaving. Oh gosh, yeah, Periapsis is still under physical time warp. Wait, our apoapsis is going down pretty precipitously right now. How much of an atmosphere do they give Pluto? Atmospheric height, 110 kilometers. Atmospheric pressure is 0 0.00987 atmospheres? Is it supposed to be that thick? That's 1% Earth atmosphere. That's practically Mars. No wonder it's pulling us down. And the wonders we didn't even... Did we even need to slow down that much? I mean... Did we even need to use our Delta V that much? I don't know. Are we going to leave the atmosphere before we... Well, I should probably... Go back to SAS and go prograde and boost up a bit more. If I can. Probably should be able to. But yeah, that's a surprise. I didn't think the atmosphere of Pluto was that thick. Yeah, I mean, look how quickly it's bringing us down. Why didn't this help with landing anyway? It seemed to take a lot of Delta V to land still. But I guess we were coming more straight down instead of skimming. Jeez, we're not getting very high up and it's pulling us down still. We go in from 200 kilometers down to 128 now. This is some seriously problematic stuff. I'm going all the way to 500 kilometers. And hope that we can get out of here. Pluto is trying to pull us back. And there's some wicked stuff. And doesn't the atmosphere scale down with height or what? Pluto atmosphere. Because it sure seems thick even here. I mean they say thin tenuous atmosphere. Doesn't feel tenuous right now. One Pascal, roughly 100,000 times less than Earth's at atmospheric pressure. I think something has gone horribly wrong with the numbers here. Uh, this is Pluto. That is not 100,000 times less than Earth's atmospheric pressure, folks. What's up with this? Hmm. Well, maybe I need to update real solar system. I bet you whenever I find something wrong, somebody says, oh, there's been another update. Well, I'll find it. I guess I'll see if there's been another update. But look at it. I mean, we've only gone up like four kilometers. It's brought us down by 100. The atmospheric scaling itself, does it even have a scale height? It didn't, uh, it doesn't list a scale height, which is weird. Because by this side, it should be gone more or less but it's still basically doing the same thing well we've learned something about pluto folks okay it is tapering off here so boy it must be even thicker at the ground all right we have escaped its atmosphere gosh okay so we have a rendezvous solution and we're going to have to separate off this lander to meet up with the other lander and this lander the one that's currently attached here is going to have to do a pretty significant burn and we don't really have a pilot <laughs> we're gonna have our quartermaster do it i guess maybe currently we've got a nice sort of minor gravity rotation going on okay We've got 10 more minutes, and now our quartermaster Roner will be tasked to do this. 
because Roner is in here, we're gonna have to use this as a tug, I guess. Hmm. Maybe I should have only landed one Kerbal on the surface. I don't know if we have a controller on here otherwise. I don't think so. That's another thing we need to add next time. So we do need a Kerbal. All right, um, do we have any mysterious locked fuel? It looks like, oh, there we go. Uh, it looks like we have less Delta V than we ought to. Ah, this center one. Okay, that's what I packed. All right. Eight minutes, well, and uh, it doesn't show our relative speed there. Mm, 294 meters per second. That might take this a little bit of time. It's maybe three, four minutes. Okay. And ignition. Our Pluto missions are raised 60 kilometers away. This is gonna be hard still. Gotta try and go straight in. You can see the separation at closest approach, but let's not get too close. Well, Roner's done a good job. But our Pluto mission is no longer in view. It's past the 100 kilometer point. So it's going to be tough to get back to it. And we'll have 11 hours or so. Well, actually less than that because of the pod's power. Uh, we have two pods. Hmm. So more like five to six hours or so. Okay, we are joined. But we need to shut down these engines now. Okay, so what the heck do we have to do to catch up to it now? Is it even going to be possible? Well, there's a point there. We're already, already going on escape here, though. Um, okay, so something like that will do. Okay. Ah, the stupid purple line. Boy, our orbit after we make this correction is a little bit iffy, to be honest. Because it's an escape orbit. Well, the separation at closest approach is coming down now. That's good. And, well, that's within render range. I'll take it. Yep, that's about as close as that's going to get. Alright, and it's... 44 meters per second to match speed, so that's good. If it's true. Wait, when is it? One hour. Okay. Well, the Pluto mission is just right there, so I guess. Well, there's Pluto again. Now, let's see. Okay, well. Something to fuel down. Well, we don't really need to. Ignition. These don't actually need knowledge. Both sides will have to dock independently, so we'll have to move some electric charge and fuel into the other one. So, once again, just imagine that the main lander, they turned off a whole bunch of stuff a la Apollo 13, and that's how they survived for long enough. Alright, final correction. Well, getting into a parking situation. Okay, negative parallel. Okay, final approach to docking. Okay, and the other lander now. So this ended up a bit more complicated than I thought it would be. And so we're probably going to save their potential return for next time. Though that'll probably end up being a very short video and well, you never know. You never know. Consider I mean I'm thinking it's gonna be a short video because we're gonna get there and then it's they're all gonna burn up immediately on re-entry because we're coming in too fast. But uh well, we'll find out.
I'll also have to decide whether to ditch the landers or whether to keep them as a supplementary RCS. Now that we have their RCS on, we could use their MH and Mon 3 since we've lost most of our uh, methane and oxygen already. And so they could help with turning the vehicle, but they're sort of centrally located. So that's not the best place to rotate something. If it was translational, that'd be fine, but rotation, it's not so great. Okay, final docking approach here. Okay, so, well, we landed on Pluto, and we discovered that Pluto has way more atmosphere than it ought to, so that's a thing. And I discovered I needed to pack a whole lot more power, electric charge, on these landers than I did, and probably a little bit more delta V. Maybe. Now, before I accidentally decouple these landers with the crew on board, if I decide to ditch the landers, I mean, uh, we should probably transfer the crew now. And we'll have to wait till next time to try to bring them back. Sorry about not getting as much done in this episode as I thought I would. And also for taking so long to get this episode to you, I was busy making Lunar Landers and finishing the Around the World in 80 Planes series, so I got caught up in all that. But yeah, we'll try and bring them back to Earth in the next episode and we'll see how that goes. Alright, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.